arrangement of these David Austin Garden Roses. Um, we're going to do an arrangement with all roses. Um, so I'm excited to see how it all turns out. I'm going to actually do multiple colors. We have these, oh my goodness, these gorgeous um, red. We have a pink and we have a white. Um, their varieties are Tess. This pretty red is Tess. I've got a pink. I've got actually two varieties of pink. Are we there? Can yeah, you hear the, that? Um, the audio was real messed up. But I'm okay, are you fixing it? So I'll go back over that. Sorry, guys, technical difficulties. You know this computer. Okay. <laughs> um, so we've got several varieties, and as we go through using these varieties, I will tell you about the types. Um, but these came from EC Flowers and More, um, a company that was so kind to send us these roses, and so we're excited to use them. Um, so we are live on both Facebook and um, YouTube. So when you come on, please tell us hello, tell us how you're doing, and tell us where you're from. I have Miss Victoria here with us, and so she is going to help me by reading your comments while I design, and I can answer any questions that you might have. So today, we are going to, last week, I used all Lysianthus just different shades and colors of Lysianthus in an arrangement. So today we're going to do that with garden roses. Um, I'm starting out, we've got this brass container. Here at our flower shop, we accept, um, we accept vases that people are finished with. So if you have any vases that you need to recycle, we are so happy um, to recycle those vases for you. We give them a good bath and we put them into rotation where we can um, make beautiful flower arrangements in them and send those out to um, customers. This container came in a lot of vases that a sweet um, person brought to us. And I thought, wow, this would be a gorgeous container to use for this rose arrangement. So that's what we're going to use today. So it's not very deep, but it is, um, it, it, it will hold water. Um, so I have placed a piece of fresh floral foam right into this vessel and I added fresh water into the vessel. Now this is about a third of a block of floral foam that has been soaked and placed into this container. I'm going to take this tape. This is just waterproof tape. Here at our flower shop we call this tape bulldog tape, um, but it's just a green waterproof tape and I am just taking it and taping my floral foam into place. Now when using floral foam, you always want to soak it first. So be sure if you're going to use floral foam that you're gonna soak it first. Um, do not place flowers into dry or fresh flowers. Do not place dr fresh flowers into dry floral foam. What it would do is it will clog the stem and it'll cause that flower not to drink water. So always remember when using floral foam to soak it first, okay? Now this container, you could probably use, um, instead of using floral foam as your mechanics, you could absolutely use some um, chicken wire where you took that chicken wire and kind of bunched it into a shape that would fit right down into this container. Fill your container with water it would very likely work. Um, the only problem with that is that it would be hard to move from the flower shop or from one place to another because your flowers are going to be loose. They're not gonna be as compact. Um, I find with delivering flowers here at the flower shop, fresh floral foam is our best mechanic when delivering. Now this flower arrangement will not be delivered. It's actually probably just going to be enjoyed here at the shop. Um, but I just like to use fresh floral foam. But it's absolutely not necessary. So if you do not have fresh floral foam at home, you can absolutely make an armature or a grid in your container by using, um, you could even use 
You could use branches where you kind of made a grid with your branches. You could even use tape and tape a grid on your container and it will help hold your flowers in place. So if you don't have floral foam, there are always other options. Um, so try those. When you're designing at home, absolutely try different ways to make a grid to hold your flowers. Victoria, have we got anybody talking to us? Um, on YouTube, Chris asks if the arrangement is for an order. It is not, Chris. This is actually, we had the opportunity to use these beautiful David Austin garden roses. And so, I thought we would just use these in a beautiful design. So that's what we're going to do. So no sir, this is not for an order. It's actually just, just because we want to use their beautiful roses. So this is, so these are called, David Austin Garden Roses are actually um, a brand of roses. David Austin is a brand and it's always more of a garden rose, a garden variety. So a garden rose opens really wide and really pretty. Most often when you see them real open, you think of a peony, um, how a peony grows and how open it is with its real open, beautiful petals. A garden rose most often opens that big and that full and that pretty. Um, this white variety is called Patience. Patience is this white variety. So I'm going to start. I'm not adding greenery. I know you're all going to be surprised because I'm a greenery girl. But we're going to come in with all of our roses first. And then we will add greenery last. And I'm not planning on using a whole lot of greenery in this arrangement. I'm wanting to go. I'm trying to use less greenery in my designs. So we're just going to be creative. I'm also not going to wire these roses. And that's just because I'm using them here at the shop. So I'm not gonna wire them. Um, so when I don't wire them, don't fuss. If it was going out for an order, I would definitely wire it. Now with garden um, roses, you can absolutely reflex these um, petals back. And so to open this rose and make him really open and large, you can take those petals and just very carefully fold those back. Now this, I like to, I don't reflex roses unless it's going to like a dinner party or a wedding. And that's strictly because they last so much longer if you do not start messing with their petals. But I'm going to show you how amazing this rose is going to open up if I reflex these petals. So all I'm doing is very carefully taking the petal and just flipping it inside out basically. So I'm just taking it and just flipping it. You have to be careful with roses because you will tear that little rose petal. But now I'm just very carefully running my fingers right into those petals and just opening them, opening them up. Um, Miss Mary Lou says, I like your sweater, Marnie. Thank you. Thank you. I think I picked this up at Goodwill. But I've always liked the colors. <sighs> the colors always made me happy. Okay, so there is a reflexed rose where we've just taken and opened those petals. Now, these petal, these roses, once they have warmed up, will begin to open. But they've got a pretty good petal count. So meaning they've got lots of pretty... A lot of petals. So once they open up, they will be pretty large blooms. And as you let them warm up, I really should have pulled these out a little while ago so that they would open up for us, but that's okay. We're going to use them tight and we'll open a few and use those open. I'm very carefully taking my fingers and just pressing those petals open. Now this Patience has a little bit of an ivory colored throat, which is really pretty. I'm just taking that rose and cutting it at an angle. Miss um, Mary Lou says, I love Goodwill. 
Um, on Facebook, Kyle Dunbar says, Hi, ladies. Kyle Dunbar, we haven't heard from you in a while. So glad you're here, friend. He says, Sorry, I haven't been on lately. I have been going through things. Um, and then he says, I love you, you lady. Oh, we love you, Kyle. So glad to hear from you. Kyle, funny story. My Mimi, I talked to her um, recently, and she was asking about you because she watches our lives. And, and she, she hadn't heard from Kyle? Yeah, she said, she said, Kyle's normally on, and I miss him. I hope he's doing okay. Isn't it funny? <laughs> what a family we have. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, so I am just going to make a southern wad out of these roses. So very carefully. You can see I'm blowing it. And what that's doing is just kind of opening that rose up. And this takes just a little time. Um, it, they don't always open just big and wide. wide. You kind of have to work with them. But you can see they're just beautiful. And y'all, these garden roses smell as pretty as they look. A beautiful fragrance. The funny thing is, is these roses um, have been in the cooler. And so, they, um, they usually, when they come right out of a cooler, they don't have terribly a lot of fragrance but these smell very pretty now you're gonna see I'm gonna leave a little bit of the foliage on these roses and we're just gonna be creative with this design um, Chaz from YouTube says aloha from Hawaii hello Chaz thank you for being here Oh, Phyllis on Facebook says, Hello, Monty and Little Victoria. <laughs> I'm retiring this year after 48 years of nursing, and my dream is to have a beautiful garden of heirloom and garden roses. Oh, please share pictures when you begin. We would love to know how everything goes. But look at how beautiful that bloom is. I mean, it's so pretty. Um, Miss Margaret Lynch says, what a family, thanks to you, Monty, and Miss Victoria. I know, Miss Margaret, I know. Miss Margaret hadn't been here in a little bit. I read last night. She had how many days, Miss Margaret, without the internet? Bless her heart. She was only watching us on YouTube. She was missing us, and we were missing <laughs> you, Miss Margaret. Um... Joanne says, love your arrangements, first time on the comments. Oh, so glad you're here, Joanne. Thank you for commenting. So any of these roses, like this one has a little bruise there. I'm just going to take and remove that, that little bruise. So I have never worked with this company before, but I'm very excited um, to receive some of their beautiful product. And these are absolutely amazing roses. Um, so I am excited to see what they may have to offer, but um, Daniel was so kind to call and say, we'd like to, we'd like to send you some roses so you could try them. And I said, well, we would love to try them. <laughs> we enjoy trying new things. So we're excited to try these. So I am just very carefully taking my, my finger and opening these little garden roses. Now this one kind of even looks like a little cabbage. If you looked at it up close, it has a, almost a little ball in the center, kind of like a cabbage does. Um, but it will open. Once he gets warm, he's going to open. Now, I want you to see, when I told you about their heads being heavy and it causing that stem sometimes to droop, this is the exact reason I really like to wire a rose because sometimes their little heads are heavy. And garden roses just have a very large petal count, so therefore their heads are a little heavy. Now, most often in our flower shop, we only use garden roses for special occasions because they are a little pricey, but they are amazing. And they're really fun to use for special occasions. So I, you can see I am just kind of taking these roses and I am just placing them here and there in this container. I'm removing any of the petals. Now, go ahead, Victoria. Oh, EC Flowers and More commented. Saying, Did they? Yay! Saying, hello, we love your videos. Regards from Ecuador. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. And thank you for your beautiful product. It's amazing. It is so, so pretty. 
We are excited to use them. So they're just beautiful, y'all. Garden roses are just amazing. Um, Charlene from YouTube says, so happy to finally catch you on Live and Learn. So glad you're here with us. Thank you for being here. So the white is Patience. The name of this white garden rose is Patience. Now, when I use garden roses and I work in wedding work, most often with wedding work, I do not wire the roses. And it's because they're usually um, very tight. I'm arranging them in a very tight arrangement. So most often they are not wired. Oh. <laughs> okay, there's our white. They kind of look all interesting. Okay, so this is a soft blush pink, and this pink, I have two varieties of pink. This pink is called Juliet, so it's just, it's almost a pinky peach. It has a touch of yellow around the base of the rose. Y'all, it's so pretty. Miss Dawn, I was laughing because I was reading your comment. What did Miss Dawn? She was, she was saying, Victoria, you only have 19 days until Valentine's Day. <laughs> She's You're got the right. countdown yeah. for you. You're right. I should. I. I guess I just need to make something. We will make soon. something. <laughs> so I am just taking my floral knife and I'm removing some of these these um, little thorns on this Juliet rose, just strictly because they bite. And you can see I'm leaving some of this foliage on these roses because that foliage comes with it. The, the foliage is free, so use it. If the foliage is pretty, use it. Um, Miss Mary Lou asks if Micah won his game. Micah did win his game. So that is the first game of the playoffs. We will go to Hernando, Mississippi on Saturday to watch the second game. They won one to zero. I don't know if you've ever watched soccer, but soccer is a game that you don't score a whole lot. Not a whole lot of scoring. A whole lot of running up and down the field, but not a whole lot of scoring. Um, Kay Murray from uh, YouTube says, what a fantastic tub of beautiful roses. Love the light. Isn't it beautiful? Thank you so much for being here with us. We're so glad you're here. Um, and on Facebook, Bell's Bliss Designs uh, has a question. Yes. Um, she says, on your sympathy plants, do you guys use baskets or just wrap and bow them? We use both. So, there for quite a while after COVID, we have always been a flower shop that has used baskets for our plants. But you know, after COVID, we struggled with finding baskets. I'm kind of a picky basket person. I think he needs to potty Victoria. Um, I like a soft roll, roll top basket for a plant because the plant fits snugly in that basket um, and they don't kind of rock and roll around in that basket. Um, so I had a hard time finding the baskets. Well, during that period, we would wrap all of our plants. After I, they were available, the baskets were available, they were double and triple in the price. So, when they went up so much, I charge one price for a green plant, a small plant, a medium plant, a large plant. I charge um, one price if it's going to be wrapped. And if you'd like a basket, there's an upcharge for a basket. And we just offer it as an upcharge. We just explain. Um, we wrap it and put a pretty bow for this price. And if you want it to be in a basket, we can certainly do that, but it's gonna be $10 more. And we usually, I, I would say we probably wrap as many as we add baskets to. But we do a small, medium, and large, and then we do an upgrade with um, crosses or angels or and that kind of stuff. Um, so our small plant in wrap is a ten inch, I know, a six inch plant, and our six inch plant is forty dollars wrapped. It's forty five in a basket. Our medium plant is an eight inch plant, 
It is 60 wrapped and 70 in a basket. And then our large is a 10 inch plant and it is 80 wrapped and 90 in a basket. Um, Jackie Funk says hello from Leander, Texas. I'm a little late to the live, but wanted to know what variety of roses you are working with. So these are called David Austin Garden Roses. We got these um, from a company called EC Flowers and More. They're an Ecuadorian company, and they just gave us a call last week and asked if we would mind if they sent us some flowers to work with, and we said absolutely, we do not mind. And so Daniel um, gave us a, sent us a box of these David, David Austin Garden Roses. And so the pink variety is called Juliet, um, and it's just a very soft pink rose. And then the white is called Patience. And then we have a second pink rose um, that's called Charity. And then we have these gorgeous red ones that I think are my favorite. And the red is called, if I can find its little tag. It's on the It's on that front. side. Yeah. I love that it has these tags. Tess. Tess is the red. Okay. Um, Bell's Bliss Design says, that's how I'm doing now. Baskets, yes, are crazy prices after COVID. Thank you. I'm just making sure I'm kind of right on my pricing and thought process. That might be a customer of Victoria because I don't think we want that big. Um, yes, I just have found that, you know, I hate it. I hate to have to, to price baskets separately. Um, and that we wrap them pretty. And really, we, even when we started wrapping, never had anybody complain. And so we have found that that wrapping was never really a problem. Did you lock that door? Okay, it was good. Locked. That was just it was just Todd. Todd. Okay, good. <laughs> um, we've never had anybody really, really um, upset with us that we had to charge for the basket. So this one's called Charity, and I want you to look at this rose. It has like a little green center that kind of has, I mean, I don't even know what to say. How do you call that? It reminds me of the movie we watched. Um, Pandora. Oh, <laughs> With the Avatar? little, yeah, okay. Avatar. Avatar, my mouth wouldn't work. <laughs> um, but this is such an interesting, pretty rose. Um, Dawn Miller says this arrangement of roses looks like something you would see in a painting. Oh, yes. Kind of a Victorian look. Who was it that sent us a message the other day asking, what would you do for a Victorian? It was one of our followers. Um, and I always think Victorian is kind of these colors, blushes and burgundies and whites. Um, some of these are a little tight. So I'm just kind of running my finger down in there to open them up just a little bit. John says, I hear Mr. Todd. Yes, he's tiptoeing around. He's waiting on Jason to get back. Jason had to um, go out on a delivery, and so he's ready to go home is what the problem is. Um, Jackie says, the tests are my favorite as well. Always wanted to work with them. And Allison says, oh, I love the charity. Aren't they beautiful? So I'm just taking and opening some of these up. Now, um, like I said, I don't do that for an order just strictly because I want them to be tight and pretty for the, for the customer. Josie Creek Baptist Church. It's somebody's burn order, I think. But these are so soft and so so pretty. And I mean, they're just they're just perfect. I mean, they're just beautiful. So I am um, I'm just going all the way around in this container, so it's as pretty on the back side as it is on the front. And this would be used as a centerpiece on a table, or a beautiful arrangement um, at an entry on an entry table 
at a wedding. I think it would be lovely. Um, Daniel Valencia says, yes. thank you so much, Monty. It is a pleasure and an honor to see my flowers in one of our <laughs> one of your videos. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much for um, trusting us with your beautiful blooms. Because they are beautiful. All right, so I think I have enough pink and I have enough white. Now we're gonna come in with these red. Ooh. Um, so, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Faith Osley says, love all your work and sent 310 stars. Oh, Faith, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the stars, thank you so much. Okay, so this is my favorite. I don't know, they're all gorgeous, but I think that this test is my favorite. Look at that, oh. Okay, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Wow, it makes me sing, look at this. So, is this not the ultimate Valentine arrangement? With the reds and the whites and the pinks? Um, Linda asks, what is this for? She missed the beginning. Miss Linda, this is really not for any occasion. This is, we have the opportunity um, to try out some product from a company called DC Flowers and More. Um, Daniel sent us a box of these garden roses that are absolutely amazing. And so we are able to use their roses and I thought let's make an all rose arrangement using these beautiful garden roses. Um, the variety is by David Austin and David Austin is, um, it's, just a, it's just a type of rose, it's a variety. Um, of rose. Um, they do, David Austin specializes in garden roses. Um, Rebecca Tackett says those are stunning. Rebecca Tackett, <laughs> aren't they? We need these for that wedding, don't we? <laughs> um, Carter Holland says, yes, perfect Valentine's Day gift. Um, on YouTube, Holly says, hello from Long Island, New York. I've been following for a while and love your style. I would love to see some more of your shop interior. Oh, we will take you on a tour one day. Yes, ma'am. Um, it's not going to be too long, and we will walk you through all of the Valentine, um, all of the wild and crazy Valentine things. But yes, we will take you on a tour. We have a very tiny flower shop. Our flower shop is nothing spectacular. It's nothing fancy. We are really just a little studio flower shop located in Starkville, Mississippi. And we're, really, there's not, you're not going to walk in and be impressed by any means. Um, it's just a small studio. And we carry green plants and a few gifts, but nothing over the top. But we love what we do, and we specialize in fresh flowers. We have balloons, and we have a little bit of plush, but not, not a whole, whole lot of gifts. We're really, I would not say, at all a gift shop. Oh, these, these are so pretty. The mm. tests are really so lovely. Um, Ed Simcoe wants to know if they can see them up close. Please. Yes, Ed, I will t I will bring them over to the camera. Oh, um, someone ha asked a question earlier, and I can't go back and find it, but I think they asked if you put flower food in the water, would you soak the oasis? Yes, we do. Yes, we add flower food. So I have just a tub. I don't know. This is covering up that rose, isn't it? That red that I just put in there. Oh, I think it's okay. Oh, the picture's going on. Oh, oh snap. I got we had not done it very long, though. Have we been designing long? We've been designing for almost 30 minutes. Oh, have mercy. I fixed it. Okay, so is it, it coming come back? back up soon. There we go. Sorry, Sorry guys. <laughs> this darn camera. We're going to have to get us a new camera. <laughs> 
this camera times out after 30 minutes. It gets it gets its feelings hurt because you haven't told it anything <laughs> in about 30 minutes. So it just times out. It just says I'm done. Thank you. Okay, so I have got it. Look at that. That's beautiful. That is so pretty. Okay, so I have all the roses that I'm going to put in this arrangement, I believe. And look at it. It doesn't look at it. <laughs> it does not need a whole lot of a whole lot of foliage. I'm so proud that I am doing better with trying to be a little a little outside of my norm. It's good to grow and be different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, Victoria's like, sure. <laughs> you were fine just the way you were. Okay, I am going to add a little bit of greenery into this arrangement. I think I think the sunlight is making it. You see how it looks? Oh it's yeah, it's like a little yellowish. I'm okay, thinking it's probably the to. sun. Because Allison mentioned it. Did that help? I'm trying to. What if we back this up? Ooh. Oh, that was my favorite. Yeah, I think it is the sun. Because I think it. Did that help? I believe so. Okay, that took that glare off. Okay, so next what we're going to do is let's add just a little bit of foliage into this arrangement. So the foliage that I brought all over, I wanted to do something a little different than I normally do. I'm trying to get out of the rut. Um, I had one little lady say yesterday, you use the same flowers over and over. Yes. We use a lot of the same flowers over and over, and it's because we have a lot of flowers on standing, and so we do. We use a lot of the same types of flowers in our shop. Um, I have found it terribly, terribly hard to have arrangements on your website and not carry those flowers, and so it's just hard to have lots and lots of different varieties. Um, we do not have just a huge, huge shop, and so we don't have the opportunity to bring in millions of varieties every week. I try to do different varieties um, during the week, but yes, you're going to see if I am arranging everyday flowers, we're going to have a lot of the same varieties because those are the things that we sell. Um, those are the things that we find are reasonable enough for me to bring in and be able to sell to our customers. Um, but I will work on having more variety. So, with that being said, number one, I use no foliage in this arrangement, which you always see me use tons of foliage. Um, I've had even people say, Monty, you use too much foliage. <laughs> and that's great because I need your input. But today I decided to use less foliage um, and try to use the foliage from the roses. Now, the foliage that I am choosing to use for this arrangement is going to be this baby blue uke or spiral eucalyptus. Um, this spiral eucalyptus I am ordering from Budsy, um, which has lots of varieties of foliage. Um, and this is one of those varieties is this baby blue uke. And it smells so pretty. And it's so pretty to look at. You have a few questions. Yes, yes, please. Um, Carter Holland asks, do you use quick dip on your hydrangeas when you conditioned them or just when you are arranging them? I don't use quick dip when I condition. Probably should, but I don't. Um, we condition, I don't know if you saw the, we did a video, a reel back a few days ago on Monday. Um, we work as a group to process. So we, like I said, we're a tiny little flower shop and our flower shop has, how many of us? Me and you. Owen, Jason, Callie, and Robbie. So there's six total. And on Fridays, there's five of us. And so there's six total employees here at our flower shop. And so we all work together. Now, our boys do not design. And that's just strictly because we can't get their bottoms in here to learn how to design. I think Owen could design. Um, I don't know how great he would be because he doesn't pay attention to detail very well. Um, and he's not really artistic. But everybody does everything, and so we work together. 
Um, when we cut hydrangeas, we always leave their sleeves on them and we just cut them and put them in water, let them drink for about an hour. Um, and then we put them in the cooler. Now we will quick dip after um, when we go to arrange with them. So if I was putting them in this fresh floral foam, I would definitely quick dip. Um, Bell Swiss Design says, I'm hoping to finally have helium ever after almost seven months without it. Wow. Um, we actually called our helium company and they are, they said that our local Walmart has 40 um, bottles of helium at our local Walmart. So they're just hoarding the helium so that our small businesses can't get it. How, cra how crazy is that? 40 bottles. I think that's silly. Share, people, share. Um, Anne Eunice Wynn says, Monica's arrangement of beautiful David Austin's is sensational. You've really <laughs> outdone yourself. It is amazing. Well, I tell you, it's hard to mess up something this beautiful. I mean, really, quite honestly, how do you mess up something this amazing? Um, Miss Gail asks, do the David Austins have a lot of thorns? When I buy the plants in British Columbia, Canada, they are very thorny. Um, the only variety I found that was had a whole lot um, was the, was it, I think it's the charity that had a good many thorns. The rest of them really didn't. I didn't notice it on the Juliet or the Tess. And the patients didn't. I just noticed it more on the um, on the charity. So not too bad. Um, it's funny though how certain varieties have more thorns than others. Is he? So I am just taking this eucalyptus, and I am just kind of going with the lines. So you can kind of see how this has like. It's kind of up here and it kind of goes down. Um, so I'm just kind of following the lines of the design. Okay. Um, Mary Thompson asks if they all smell good, the oh. roses. Um, the pinks smell better than the white. I don't know why the white didn't have. The red doesn't I don't know, the white's smell. pretty. The white smells pretty. Now that they've warmed up, they smell better. The reds have no fragrance. It doesn't smell. But the um, two pink and the white have a beautiful fragrance. Allison asks, Monty, what would this arrangement cost? At least $150, I'm guessing. I bet it's more than that, Allison. I would have to count the number of roses that I put in there. But I would bet it's more than that. Oh, Dawn Miller says I made a Valentine's wreath for my front door today. We need to see it, Dawn Miller. I bet it's cute. Um, Bell's Bliss Design says your shop sounds much like mine as far as the setup and gifts. I have 1,200 square feet all open and I can't make myself clutter it up. My work area is a big counter in the whole shop. I wish I had made a workroom. We have, a, so we're in a house. I mean, and we are in probably, I bet we're 1,500 square foot, but the problem is, is it's choppy. <laughs> so we have, the room that I am working in now would actually be considered the living room of this old house. And um, it's one long room. So when you enter into our shop, you're entering into, at one time was a little game room. It was an add-on to the house. So it was a little game room. So you enter into that little game room and it's almost one step down. So it was an add-on. And then you walk into this room, but we have it kind of closed off so that this is our, our video design room. And then we have a little bit of a sales floor there. Um, and then you come into what used to be the kitchen is where we have our bases and our water and our Oh gosh, that's so pretty. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it needs another thing. Does it look like it needs foliage? I don't know. I think it's beautiful. They're all saying it's magnificent. Ooh, I'm going to take a little bit of this Israeli Ruscus, and I'm going to come all the way around down at the base um, just to make sure I'm covering all those mechanics. So I'm just taking a pair of scissors, and I'm going to chop this up into small pieces. 
Now, the design room you saw me work in yesterday was actually a bedroom. It was a bedroom of the house, and they had knocked out the walls between the two bedrooms there. One part of it is our walk-in cooler, and the other part is our design room. And so we're real choppy. I wish we could be a big room, but we're choppy. And that's no fun. Oh. Um, on YouTube, Miss Emily says, hey there, catching you live on YouTube. This Yay, is Emily. Emily. <laughs> Emily from the Lyrical Lily. This is my preschool YouTube page. Oh, I am so glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here, Emily. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I am just taking, this is called Israeli Ruscus. Ruscus comes in two varieties. We get Israeli Ruscus, which is kind of short and compact, more in a line. And then we get Italian Ruscus, which is fancier. Italian Ruscus is almost feathery, and it kind of comes in almost a vine-like. Um, Israeli is fairly inexpensive, um, so you can use a lot for a little in cost. Um, Italian Ruscus is fairly expensive, and so we don't use it quite as often, um, but it is beautiful. But I'm just taking that Israeli Ruscus and I'm cutting it into smaller pieces, and I'm just going in and tucking it into this arrangement just to make sure that I cover up my mechanic. So here's that Israeli, so you can see it's kind of short and stocky, kind of like me. <laughs> <laughs> short and stocky. Um, Marie Jose says, Monty, that is beautiful as always. How are you finding not using a lot of greenery? Oh, well, I feel as if I can be more creative with not so much greenery. I'm so proud of me. I'm so <laughs> thankful that you guys say, quit using so much dang greenery. Um, it makes me be more creative. Um, I find that greenery... You know, I'm, I, you've seen me, I can sew you some greenery. But like the other day when I made that standing spray and I didn't put all that greenery first, I did the flowers first and then I tucked greenery in, I'm saving a ton of money not using two bunches of jade or two bunches of leather in an arrangement. Um, I feel like I am able to put more money into the flowers, which are the most important part anyway, right? I mean, if I got an arrangement, I don't want to spend so much money on greenery. I would way rather spend money on the flowers. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Isn't that silly? I am, I have been designing a hundred years, or it feels like a hundred years, but, but to kind of step out of that comfort zone has been fun. I'm going to step closer to you so you can see these Okay, Victoria, I can't tell, but okay. so those are, oh, it's so pretty, Daniel, they're beautiful. I mean, it's almost as if it's out of a picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like it's out of a book, isn't it? Yeah, they are stunning. So, so, so pretty. But they smell beautiful, too. I mean, they smell like... <laughs> I was telling my sister the other day, when I was a little girl, my great aunt used to give us some perfume from Avon. And it smelled just like this rose. It smelled exactly like these roses. Um, but it just smells... When you think of a, how a rose should smell, that's exactly what they smell like. They're beautiful. Any more questions, Miss Victoria? Um, I'm not seeing any. As of yet, but they're saying it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, isn't it? But don't you like these arrangements when we use only one variety of flowers? Like, I love the fact that the colors are different, but how amazing is it that this is an all... I just love the design of all one type of flower. I'm um, like the Lysianthus. What a statement that all Lysianthus arrangement made. Back in the summertime when I did the zinnias, all those zinnias made such a statement, um, and I think these roses have done exactly that. It's just such a pretty arrangement. And you see how much I got, how big and showy this arrangement is, even in this small container. So don't feel like you have to find the biggest container to make a big arrangement. 
A smaller container is always better than a larger one. Always keep that in mind. Um, you can extend the size of the container with your product, but if you have a container that's too large and not enough product, it's always never going to give you the effect you really want. Um, but wow, wow, wow. I mean, it's just such a, it's such a statement piece when you use all the same type of flower, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Marianne Covert says, this looks like a museum piece. <laughs> it is so pretty. It does look like a painting though, doesn't it? One of those old paintings. I could even see some pretty fruit in it. <laughs> Miss Demer says it looks like it's in a mag from a magazine. Yeah, it's beautiful. It really is. And it's just all in using one type of flower. I just really think a, sta a statement piece is always made with with even just one type of flower. It's just pretty, pretty, pretty. Um, Faith Whitaker wants to know how much it would sell for. I'll look at that. I'll have to add it up, Faith. I am not exactly sure. Very seldom do we use David Austin roses. Um, they tend to be pricier than a standard rose. Um, so I'll, I'll have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'll count the roses that are in it, and I'll be sure to post that in the comments down below and let you know how much this arrangement would cost. All right, guys, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Daniel, thank you for these beautiful roses and allowing us to work with your fantastic product. We thank you so much at ECE Flowers and more for sending us your beautiful flowers to play with this afternoon. Um, if you guys have any questions about floral design or how we do things here in our flower shop, we're so happy to answer those questions. So if you want to um, send a message in Messenger, we're happy to answer those questions. And if you're interested in Daniel's beautiful flowers, I have his contact information. So send me a message and I'm happy to send you that information. Guys, you all have a wonderful evening and we will see you tomorrow. Hope you have a great day.